<clears throat> Hello friends. Um, thank you for taking a couple minutes out of your day and checking my video. Um, there's no ads on my site because <laughs> I'm not that important. Anyway, um, I had a couple thoughts today. This, this, might, this might actually be a thinker or a stinker or a thinker. Um, it's obviously kind of late at night. It's after my bedtime. I should be in bed, but um, I had a thought today that I wanted to share. Um, a couple things. A couple things. Um, one of the things that uh, my therapist, my counselor, had is really impressing upon me is that I need to live in the present moment. I need to live in the present moment, not to count on the future, look to the future, you know, what's going to happen next week, what's going to happen next month, to, to live in the present moment and be content of being alive in the present moment. And, and I would kind of argue with that. Some of the things maybe like stress related to my work I know is coming. I just don't know when. So uh, I see the logic is living, you know, seize the day, carpe canum, whatever, seize, seize the dog, carpe canis. Um, you know, live for today. But, you know, isn't it interesting or would you say that isn't it true that for so much of our transition and before we transition, we are looking to the future. You know, we know that... Um, you know, given seven months time on hormones, there's going to be some changes. A year on hormones, there's going to be changes. Two years on hormones, there's going to be changes. Um, what, you got to do hormones for a year. Uh, you also have to do a year real life test in order to be, you know, as part of the, the good, and I've already forgotten what it's called, the standards of care. The Harry S. Benjamin standards of care, what it used to be. Um, you know, you, you you have this time. You know, we are thinking about time and especially the future. You know, I'm thinking about my future. I'm getting my, my things organized. I'm going to get my letters. I'm going to do this, 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 this. Everything somewhat is looking to the future. And so, you know, I almost wonder, and, and I'll use myself as an example, if maybe I got so into that pattern of thinking about the future um, that once I had had my surgery, um, it was very hard to to live in the present moment, you know, to live in the present moment. And and I know for myself, I've mentioned I'm, I'm, I'm done. I think most of everything I have electrolysis to do and hopefully some breasts one day will, will grow. Put them under the grow lamp and they'll grow or in, 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 you know, a boob job or something. But to live in the present moment, I think, is so very, very different than what we did when we were pre-op or pre-transition or pre-full time. We, we enter into this process knowing and knowing that in the future our lives are going to be somewhat different because of the physical changes, mental changes. Would you agree? Um, and so... You know, it's kind of hard to then get to this point. It's like you live in the present moment. And you're like, okay, yes, I'm going to live in the present moment. So anyway, I just thought I would I would make that comment. And um, I have to be very careful when I talk to my therapist because, like I said, she wants me to live in the present moment. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to live in the present moment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, food for thought or an observation, I don't know. But uh, I hope that we all get to that point where we, we do live in the present moment or we're very happy for where we are at that point in time. Okay. Sorry, I'm making a bunch of noise in my chair here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is... Um, I'm trying to think how to introduce it. Um, I am halfway through the year of uh, taking a course on Druidry, on uh, being a bard, through the order of uh, bards, ovates, and druids in the UK. And every uh, every month they send me five or six of these little pamphlets. 
and um, I, I make the joke that it's a lot like Angela Lansbury and uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. You know, she gets her my first broom. You know, um, but anyway, the, there's an interesting story, and I can't really share everything about it because this is supposed to be you pay for this and top secret, and you don't tell anyone else this, the secrets of it. You know, it's it's not like the Masons or something or the Illuminati or whatever. It's the Church of Scientology. But what I can share with you um, was an observation about um, illumination. I think is probably let me let me look at my notes and that way I can I can my interpretation. Um, it says there's psychology talks about us having a peak experience and it is something that uh, you know if we have an issue and we deal with it we. It's, it's like that moment of catharsis or something that happens. And for I'm going to say for us, sorry, let me see if I can get my chair to stop squeaking. Uh, for us, um, we, oh, it worked. Good. Um, I, I think our transition is our peak experience. Or for me, it was my surgery, my peak experience. But um, anyway, a lot of change. And one of the things that it talked about was that we, I'm trying to just again put my thoughts together. I probably should have taken, wrote an outline or something. But the idea that once we reach a certain point, and for me it was my surgery, we are changed by that experience. And we don't necessarily know what to expect. I mean, you can you can think ahead or whatnot, but again, in the present moment, present moment, live in the present moment. But we are changed by that experience. You know, once we go through it, and in some ways uh, we're reborn, that was something else that kind of struck in my mind. Let's say it's a rite of passage or, or whatnot, but the idea of, of being reborn, a rebirth, a metamorphosis, if you will, um, you know, we are changed by the experience, number one. We are, uh, our bodies have changed. Our minds have changed definitely through the hormones in our bodies and, and, and everything, emotions and you know, neuro passageways have been rewired. And we have access to some things maybe we don't, we didn't know we had access to. Um, but again, as part of that process, that change, Number one, there's a destruction, so there can be rebuilt, so it can be remade. You know, our bodies recycle, and uh, nature is very good at recycle. You know, Mother Earth is it was very loving, but she can also be very destructive to destroy, pull it apart, and to renew it, to rebirth. You know, um, but the idea is, as part of that rebirth, is a huge amount of uncertainty. And I think that was part of what I experienced, not necessarily as my post-op depression, but just trying to figure out where I fit in. And, you know, do we, do you have, have you had the same experience of that after your transition? Uh, I'm going to say surgery because surgery is such a, it's the kind of thing where you, you, you get to that point and you're like, I'm about to do something I've wanted to do my whole life. You know, in my case, since I was in middle school, you know, that's when I found out some 20, 30 years ago that it was possible and I've wanted it ever since. And then I had it. It's like, you know, OK, now I have it. Now what? But more than just that, to say that I think we are changed by the experience, we're, uh, again, that idea of rebirth and to a certain degree, death. I think there's some death that has to go on, too. And. Um, you know, part of that, you go through the stages of grief or death. Again, it's, it's a renewal. It's a rebirth. We're in this new form and we're learning things. Our eyes have been opened and, and something that's, they said something about after this process of transformation or illumination, uh, our, our minds are open. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open. We are seeing things. We are experiencing you know, we're experiencing the world through a new body, a new set of eyes, because we 
we've been changed by the process. And um, I, uh, I remember, and I've, I've said this before, there was a really cool uh, trans woman back in the 90s that I used to watch, and I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she said something about, um, you may not be the same person you are at the end of your transition than you were at the beginning. Now, again, your mileage may vary. Uh, there's no hard and fast rules for that. But, you know, again, we are changed by the process. And my stepfather tells a story about, um, if you watch the movie uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, okay, the actor that plays Jesus, um, you know, by the end of the movie, and of course, who's to say they shot it in, in, in order or they followed the process, but, you know, you can, uh, you can look in his eyes and see he has been changed by this process, you know, by being crucified, by being whatever. And again, they, 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 we know they shoot movies, not necessarily in sequence, but if we can imagine that as part of this process and our eyes are opened and we're experiencing new things we're taking in uh and something that the the bard book here said uh you know we're we're thirsty for new things we're thirsty to experience life we're uh you know and, and for me maybe some of the things that i used to accept uh it's hard for me to accept now because i'm different and i've heard the other argument that no 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 you're still the same person and you might be. You're like I said. Your mileage may vary. We're, we're, no, no, t no two of us are the same. Even identical twins are different in some ways. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, I wanted to share that. Um, let me just make sure that um, you know. And this ties into my video of the butterfly drawing with my butterfly having wings that hadn't dried yet. You know, we are reborn. We are born, we reborn, we rebirth, and we may be in a period of uncertainty as we figure out what we want to do, and, and we might be changed again by the end of that initial period, you know? I don't know. Um, I think that is it. Um, the other thing I'll say about death the death of our old selves or the death of that rebirth is um, part of that is letting go, knowing when to let go and to accept change. You know, I know for myself, I didn't want to accept some changes, especially at work. Um, a plethora of changes. And, you know, it's like I'm just looking for some consistency. Here I have changed. The venue here has changed. We've only been living here three months. And you know, you crave some consistency, but again, you're fighting change too. So not that they, we, we would fight our transition, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, the idea of the death and a rebirth, whatnot. Um, the last thing that it talked about was it says enlightenment is a process. Um, you know, we think of a task of climbing a mountain for the view, let's say, or uh, it's an uphill battle or transition. We're going, we're going, we're going, thinking that we're going to get there and we'll be done. And then we find that once we get there, um, life has still has challenges and whatnot. You'd probably would say, well, duh, of course, you know, we're, we're not going to assume that we transition and everything's wonderful. But I think the idea of, of, once we we're working towards attaining let's say enlightenment or fulfillment um once we get to that point it, it's not like a cake that's given to us and we eat it and we're we're fine i mean it is still a process at that point to live and we're going towards the next thing you know the idea of enlightenment is a process we are changed we're changed by the experience i'm, I'm repeating myself so i'm going to sum up and, and end the video but you know, we are changed by the experience. And uh, um, and if you think about it, isn't that what we craved? You know, if we, if we went through the process of transitioning and, you know, we, we came out 
looking the same as when we went in or, you know, things didn't really change. Is that really what we wanted to do? Um, okay, so that's it. I'm going to tell one more funny story. Um, today we were uh, working um, and uh, we were outside uh, doing volunteer work in a forest and um, for whatever reason I just started singing some Boy Scout songs, <laughs> some Scout songs. And the woman, one of the women I was working with, she said, oh, were you a Girl Scout? Is your daughter in Girl Scouts? Because that's a Girl Scout song. And I, I was like, oh, my gosh, I outed myself. And I just shook my head and I said, no. You know, and to myself, I kind of laughed, you know. Um, well, that was kind of funny. Uh, I do have one other thing that I don't want to jinx. Um, but I may be going on my first date uh, tomorrow. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, I have been in touch with someone on OkCupid. And um, we're going to meet tomorrow in real person. So we'll see what face-to-face -face time is. Uh, and one of the things that I had said to him was, you know, I would very much like to talk to you and meet you in person. But um, I want to make sure you understand or you had seen on my profile that I am transgender. I am a trans woman. I wish I would have said post-op because, you know, but um, that way... All the cards are on the table, and you know if it's not going to work out for that reason, then then hopefully he would call it off. And I I said in the e in the the conversation that I was giving him an opt out, and I would understand if he didn't want. That probably sounds terrible, you know, to say to someone, "Hey, we're going to meet and have a fun time." And um, by the way, I, if you don't want to meet, I'll understand because I'm transgender. You know, you know, hopefully I don't run for the hills. Uh, and obviously all that good safety stuff, meeting in a public place, you know, broad daylight, whatnot, for the first time. Um, so I'm kind of nervous in a way. I'm kind of happy, but I'm curious to see what happens and, and also, also if it actually happens. You know, he might wake up in the morning and go, no, I'm not going to meet her or, you know, I guess whatnot. But anyway. All right, my friends, that is it. Um, I don't have anything else to share. Um, so I guess I'll end the video, but I, I hope everyone is doing super de duper. And, um, you know, something about this process, um, uh, the problems stay the same, but the people change. And, um, you know, hopefully we're here to be there if we're needed to help someone else, to lighten their load, perhaps, but also to learn from others, maybe. All right, my friends, good night and good luck. And I will wish you the best of luck in becoming the best version of yourself as you define it. Okay. And until then, bye-bye.